Years back I was reading about a psychologist who was studying people and their attitude towards happiness, things that made them happy. And he said he was surprised to learn that a lot of people lie to themselves about what makes them happy. You ask them in anticipation of something, will this make you happy? And they would say yes or no. And then as for the things that they said would make them happy, he found ways of asking them while they were actually experiencing those things. And it turned out they weren't as happy as they thought they would be. But then if you ask them afterward, then they seem to have remembered it as being a happier occasion than it was. They said he was surprised to see how consistently people will lie to themselves about their happiness. And then he reflected on himself, and he realized he did the same thing. He liked to climb mountains, or he said he liked to climb mountains, but he realized while he was actually on the mountains climbing, he was pretty miserable. But the anticipation made him happy, and the memory made him happy. This is something we really have to watch out for in our lives. So if we're going to really take our happiness seriously, we have to learn not to lie to ourselves about it. This is one of the reasons why the Buddha has the precepts as one of the assisting factors to right concentration. They've got all the requisites or the supports for right concentration, because it really does help if you're observing the precepts. Years back when John Sawat was leading a retreat in Massachusetts, at the very end of the retreat someone asked him a question about carrying meditation in a daily life, and he answered with the five precepts. One of the people organizing the retreats was upset, thinking that he, he was looking down on what he called low, at what this organizer called lowly lay people, in quotes, that they could only manage the five precepts. But that wasn't the point. The point was the five precepts provide training in the mind and also create an environment in which your meditation goes better and which you actually are trained in qualities you're going to need as you meditate. Truthfulness is number one. Of all the precepts, that's the one that the Buddha seems to take most seriously. You look in the Jataka tales, the stories of his lives leading up to the time when he was Buddha, and you'll find that at certain times he actually killed or stole, had illicit sex, and drank intoxicants. He's basically learning the ropes and hadn't realized that these things had to be avoided consistently. But there's never a case where he lies. In another point, he said that if you feel no shame at telling a deliberate lie, there is no evil you will not do. So he takes lying that seriously, because as we're meditating, we have to learn more and more to tell the truth to ourselves. In good practice, telling the truth on a daily basis. Not even in a joke. As he told Rahula, you make up your mind, I will not tell a deliberate lie even in jest. You think about our humor, especially in our country, a lot of it is fantasy and things that the person telling the joke knows is not true and the person listening knows is not true. Now it's one thing to say, okay, this is a joke, and you tell the joke. It's perfectly fine, but a lot of our humor is involved in misrepresenting what's going on. And the Buddha says you have to avoid that. You have to drop that. You want to be really careful that what you say does actually represent the truth. Now there are times, of course, when he says that if you say something that's going to give rise to greed, aversion, or delusion within you, or, in, or you're intending to give rise to it within your listener, then you don't say that. You learn to avoid it. And the promise to yourself that you will not misrepresent, misrepresent the truth means that you have to be very careful in how you handle delicate situations. But you want to make this a habit, because otherwise if you find it very easy to tell little white lies, then it gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And you start telling major lies, and you don't feel the difference. But if you're meticulous about even the little things, Then you notice that when the mind has this tendency to want to misrepresent something a little bit, 
You get more and more sensitive to that. And that is a really good sensitivity to have, because that makes you more sensitive to what's going on in your own mind. Because we have lots of images about what kind of people we are and what's actually going on in the mind. These perceptions are the kinds of agreements. When Thai took over the word sanya, which is the Pali word for perception, one of the meanings that they ended up giving to it was an agreement, a promise, a contract. And that's what's going on in the mind. We have these images that we send to different parts of the mind. And the different parts have agreed, okay, this image means that and that one means this. And we've learned how to lie to ourselves. We can send false messages. So that you tell yourself that you like something or you crave something. We talked about this the other day, the idea that you might, might crave a particular person or crave a particular set of circumstances. And then when you actually get that person or get that set of circumstances, you realize, well, that's not what, what you really wanted. There was something else going on in there. Maybe you were more fascinated with their perception or the image or a thought construct around that or a feeling that came up as you thought about that person or that situation it had nothing to do with the actual person or the actual situation. The thing is, if you don't recognize where your cravings are, there's no way you're going to be able to see through them. And so you have to be very truthful to yourself. We get the mind still, so it's in a better position to see what's going on, but you also have to develop this quality of truthfulness so you can speak truth to your defilements. And get the parts of the mind that genuinely want to happiness to listen, to recognize it. This is one way in which I've been lying to myself. I thought X would make me happy, but and I thought I really wanted X. Maybe it was something else around X that I wanted. So you look into that. Like climbing mountains. Climbing a mountain can be a pretty miserable experience, but being a mountaineer has a cachet. Maybe that's what the, the psychologist was in for. So at his age, he could still climb mountains. So as we take the meditation into life, and you don't necessarily bring your practice into your life, you also bring your life into the practice. In other words, make the practice the framework in which you live. And in this framework, truthfulness is very highly valued. We have a problem. Our society is really good at lying. People will say lies, and everybody knows they're saying lies, but they'd like to hear it anyhow. Because certain of our defilements like certain lies. And the more people who say the lie, then the more sort of truthiness it gets, and finally it becomes what everybody accepts as the truth, and it gets very hard to go against that. This is another reason why, as a meditator, you want to separate yourself out from the general run of things and learn how to question this, these attitudes, these values of our society. Are they really worthwhile? Are they really good for us? And when you learn to question them, then you can question yourself. The attitudes that I've developed and I've adopted here, whose interests are they serving? What interests are they serving? Are those interests really my best interests? You get the mind quiet, and if you have this practice and being truthful as you go through the day, then you start recognizing when you're not being truthful to yourself what's going on inside. This is one of the reasons why the Buddha valued truthfulness so much, and why if we value our happiness, we want to develop this quality of truthfulness as much as we can, both inside and out. Otherwise, we're no, never going to be able to find a happiness that's really true, that really does satisfy our desire. 
for a happiness we can trust.